In our last episode, we finally finished exploring Pennsylvania Avenue. It took us a couple episodes, because I missed a few things. But we did it, and now we explore the largest metro station in all of the Capital Wastelands. One we have stumbled into on a number of occasions so far in this series. One that connects to almost every other location in Greater DC. Metro Central. We found the main entrance to Metro Central smack dab in the middle of Pennsylvania Avenue. And heading down the escalators, we open the gate. We arrive in a darkened hallway. We see a ticket booth here that has another one of those functioning doors, but it's empty. Continuing west, we loot a Nuka-Cola machine that has a Nuka-Cola quantum inside and pass by a metro map to arrive at the turnstiles. Just outside the turnstiles are the bathrooms. We see a trail of blood leading into this unisex bathroom. Stepping inside, we arrive in a chamber that's much larger than any bathroom we've seen before. And here we find some ghouls. And that saves us in a clutch. Creeping inside, this doesn't look like a bathroom. But thinking about it, it begins to make sense. We see benches arrayed in a large circle. It appears to be a waiting area. And then we recall exactly where we are at. This is Metro Central, the largest metro station in all of DC. Hundreds, if not thousands of people were coming in and out of this place on a daily basis. It was probably one of the most crowded metro stations in the entire region. And so the people needed places to gather while they waited for their trains. We find one skeleton on one of these benches and lights emanating from a pillar in the middle of the room. Here we find another door to the northwest. This leads to the men's restroom. Heading inside, we find it completely ruined. Nothing in any of the stalls, but lying on the ground in front of the urinals, we find a skeleton clutching a Chinese assault rifle. Man, all of these Chinese weapons in pre-war America. Are these the remains of a Chinese commando that was tracked down to the bathroom of Metro Central? Around the skeleton, we find magazines of ammunition and two stim packs. He was wounded, and he came in here to recuperate, but he died before he could use the stim packs. We can use the Chinese assault rifle to repair up the one we have, and that's it for the men's restroom. So heading back out to the waiting area, we can move across to the women's restroom. But this one is less interesting. The stalls are all empty, and we don't find anything in the sinks. Well, with the restrooms explored, we can head back towards the turnstiles. But just before the turnstiles, we find yet another door. Metro access employees only. Creeping inside, we see a familiar sight. Oh, it's another one of those Ticket Taker Protectrons. Before activating him, we can loot up. There's nothing in the bin on top of the desks, but on the second desk closest to the Protectron, we find yet another Metro Ticket. We can snag it before waking this guy up. The door leading out of this room is blocked in with rubble, so all we can do is don our vault lab uniform so that we can hack the average locked terminal. And once we bypass the encryption, We find two options. First, we can view and download the Metro Map. This actually adds the Metro Map as a text document on our Pip-Boy. Then we can run the ticket check routine. Metro security protocol initializing. And a familiar startup sequence begins. He walks out to the turnstiles, but doesn't yet ask us for our ticket. However, he's not hostile, so we'll follow close behind him. We have no idea how many enemies are waiting for us, so we can use this guy to help us clear the area. Creeping down the ramp, we arrive at a waiting platform. And immediately, the Protectron finds a ghoul. Commencing attack on hostile target. Great wobble use of 
Well, Can't the wait. Vats Kill cinematic showed us that I forgot to put my combat armor back on. We can put that back on, then loot the corpse. This waiting platform lies within one of the largest interior metro domes that we have yet seen. But here the Protectron kind of stands around a bit before finally moving towards one of the escalators. As he heads down the escalator, he aggros more ghouls below and we can help him out. Commencing attack on target. Firing weapons. Then he beelines to the northwest, where we see another ghoul. Oh, the concrete got in my way. I didn't get him, but the ghoul moves off and the Protectron doesn't seem interested in him. He seems more interested in this second escalator that leads down to the red line. Moving around to help him, we snag the ghoul down that path. And then we wait for ghouls to come up the stairs. Your cooperation is weakness. With the ghouls dead, the Protectron is on a mission. He just wants to go deeper into this place. To the top of the escalator, he walks and then takes it all the way down. But I don't want to get too deep without exploring everything up here. So we can bid farewell to our Protectron friend and hope for the best. Good luck. The waiting platform above was rather small. There wasn't much to see up there, but there's a lot to see down here. Peering up, we see a huge hole in the concrete dome above us, and directly beneath it is a Cor Vega and a Fusion Flea. We immediately understand the story. These cars were above ground in the street and somehow fell through the dome to land right on the tracks. Perhaps it is these cars that caused the metro trains to derail. We see a huge connection of train cars bending around these cars before moving back to the tracks. To the northeast, we see another set of escalators leading down to the red line platforms. This is directly opposite to the escalators that our ticket taker Protectron went down to cleanse the platform Below. Well, we gotta figure out where to go first. Since I shot and killed that ghoul behind us, we'll head there first. We see that this tunnel leads westbound towards Foggy Bottom. Foggy Bottom, a location we have already explored. Moving into the tunnel, we see a passageway lit with red light to the south. The track to the west is blocked in with rubble and a ruined train car, so we can't go any further south. There are two red lights glowing from the ceiling of this tunnel connecting the two tracks. Creeping inside, we find a small passageway to the west, but it's blocked in with rubble. And turning around, we can open a gate, which is locked with an easy lock to find a stack of generators here. And on a table near to them, we find some scrap and a copy of Dean's Electronics. After looting, we can head back and follow the pathway to the south. This leads to the other track that was blocked up from the station by a rail car and rubble. We see that following this track, we can move west. And peering west, we see the silhouettes of a few ghouls. Sure enough, the eastern passage is completely blocked in, so turning around, we can move down the tracks to see a bunch of radioactive barrels lying in this rubble. Oh, I really don't want to have to deal with more radiation. So taking some Radex and donning our radiation suit, we can creep forward to loot the ghouls, only to discover the body of a Talon Company Merc. On his body, we find a laser pistol and a full suit of Talon combat armor. And we can use our handy dandy Vault 101 utility jumpsuit to repair the suit we have with this new suit of armor. All right. The Merc was using a Chinese assault rifle. Again, we can use this to repair the one we have, and we can finish looting the bodies. Moving west over the radioactive barrels, we can travel quite a ways atop this rubbish until we can't go any further. But to continue, we can follow trails of blood towards a doorway at the top of a staircase to the north. Creeping inside, we arrive at the top of a staircase surrounded by sandbag barricades. Moving around one, we find three ammo canisters, one of which is locked with an easy lock we can walk away with quite a bit of ammunition. Peering behind the others, however, we just find spatters of blood. 
Moving to the staircase, we can follow it down, and this begins to look familiar. We've been here before, but we came from the opposite direction. This is the room that we emerged into when we opened the door to Metro Central and exploring Foggy Bottom. We heard the sounds of ghouls from behind the scrap wall at the time, but we didn't venture any further inside. Sure enough, opening the door, we arrived in Foggy Bottom, right at the end of the eastern tracks, looking directly into the station. Okay, one connection made, many more to go. Heading back inside Metro Central, we can retrace our steps back to the tracks, move east through the passageway bathed in red light, and since the west is blocked to us, we can continue east to arrive back at Metro Central. Now we could take these escalators down to the red platforms below, but let's move to the eastern end of Metro Central to see what's down these tracks. At the end, we see this tunnel filled in with cars, but looks like we could squeeze between them. It says eastbound to Vernon Square Station. We'll head in here for now, but I was wrong. Moving deeper in, the tunnel is too blocked in with rail cars to move around. It looks like there may be a gap back there somewhere, but if there is, we can't get there from here. So heading back to the station and moving north, we can go east down the next tunnel. We arrive at a doorway bathed in more red light, but this one's sporting a radiation symbol. We see a passageway to the east, but creeping up the stairs, we can see where this goes, and this begins to look familiar too. We've been in this room with radioactive barrels that aren't actually radioactive before as well. And that's because this door leads back to Freedom Street Station. This was the station that had the merchant, the merchant whom I stole some rat away from. Sure enough, here we are, back in her stash. Oh, wait. Wait, what? How did I miss this? Lying on a table in the merchant's bedroom is a copy of Tumblr's Today. Well, I mean, I'm sure she's already read it. It's a magazine, after all. She's probably got this one committed to memory. She won't miss it. We say to convince ourselves that stealing is okay. After reading the magazines, we can head down the stairs where we know the merchant is waiting for us. What do you need? And she's still friendly. She doesn't miss the magazine. But her inventory is still as unimpressive as ever. Though she has a bunch of caps and we can sell some stuff to take home as many of those as we can. Well, since we've been here before, and with another connection made, we can retrace our steps back to the door to Metro Central, through the room of barrels, and down the steps to the tracks. When we were here last, we saw a ghoul down this way, and sure enough, rounding the corner, there he is. Moving east, we can't go any further, it's blocked up. So heading into this nook, we find that the ghoul was hiding in this little cubby. We can look the body, and here we find more skeletons and another Talon Company body. Scattered on the ground amongst these skeletons and the corpse are more magazines of ammunition, more stim packs, and another Chinese assault rifle. We can walk away with four magazines, two stim packs, an assault rifle, a Chinese assault rifle, and a full suit of Talon Combat Armor. Moving into the generator nook, we don't find anything, and if we try to move south past these radioactive barrels, we come upon the southern track, which, as we discovered a moment ago, is completely blocked in with train cars. We can't go any further that way. So that means that this level of Metro Central is clear. Oh, hey, look at that. Our Protectron buddy survived, though he did take a few hits, which means he probably cleared the platform below for us. Well, let's see what damage this guy did. Moving to either of the two escalators, we can head down to the next level. And we arrive on a mezzanine waiting platform. Turning south, we see a sign, southbound to Museum Station. And this one is emblazoned with Brotherhood Graffiti, GNR Outpost, that way. The other side of the platform just has a metro map. Moving down, we find another ticket booth with another functioning ticket booth door, but there's nothing inside. And as our friend comes down the escalator, we realize that there's nothing much up here. Though the Protectron chose this moment to ask us for our metro ticket. Scanning for valid ticket. Verified. Thank you for riding with metro. 
and he takes one of our tickets. We do find a raider corpse up here with some 32 caliber rounds on it. Well, let's go counterclockwise, heading northeast and taking the escalator down to this bottom platform. We see the Protectron's handiwork, a ghoul corpse lying on the ground to the southeast. Before heading that way, we can move north. We see train cars and concrete beneath that mezzanine platform. And turning north, we see that these tracks led to DuPont Station. Heading north down the tracks, we see that one of the tracks is filled in with ruined train cars. The western one is clear. Creeping between the train cars, we can continue north. And at the end, we see a bunch of ghouls. Oh, this one wants to move to the other side. Oh, come on, pick a side, fella. There we go. Continuing north down the tracks, we can loot the bodies. We see a red line illuminated sign on the wall. Northbound DuPont Station, southbound Metro Central. Continuing north down the western track, we loot the ghoul bodies, and we find that the western track is filled in with rubble and more radioactive barrels. Oh, God. All right, putting the radiation suit back on and taking yet another rad X, we can move over there to loot the last ghoul. Not really sure if it was worth it. But then against the eastern wall, we see more Brotherhood graffiti and directly beneath it, we find some stacks of ammo, some flamer fuel, 10 millimeter rounds, and a stim pack. Okay. Thank you, Brotherhood of Steel. Could have picked a better spot that wasn't radioactive, but thank you. In the western wall behind us, we find a door. Heading up the staircase, we arrive in a small hallway, and at the end of the hallway is a door that leads to a large room. This room is bathed in red light, and it's bisected by a short cinder block wall that looks familiar. Oh, we've been here before. Rounding the cinder block wall, sure enough, we find a little stash of ammunition, all of which is empty because we came here and looted it in a previous episode. Though it looks like we missed something, lying on the ground beneath one of these table legs is a frag grenade. All right, good reason to revisit locations. On the table is a 10 millimeter pistol that we can use to repair up the silenced one that we have. And turning around, we see the door we came through that leads to the security door back to DuPont Station. That's right, this tunnel to DuPont Station was at the end of a sewer. There's the trip wire that we disarmed and there's the fragmentation bouquet that we couldn't loot. Remember, we found this cinder block checkpoint with a raider corpse on the ground that was at the end of the metal catwalk that spanned the water in that cave. All right, another connection made. So retracing our steps, we can head back to the gate to Metro Central, head through the small room, down the hallway, down the stairs, and back to the tracks. Well, with these tracks explored, we can cross the barrier to explore north down these tracks. Here we find the body of a slave. On her body is a slave map. Examining the slave map in our inventory, we read the following. There is hope. There is a safe place. Find the Temple of the Union, where slaves are made into free men. Look to the north, near Canterbury. We recall from my previous lore series that slavery plays a big role in Fallout 3. The headquarters of the slavers is Paradise Falls, led by the slaver mastermind, Eulogy Jones. Eulogy Jones! We can either fight them or join them. We met the people who are freeing slaves at the Temple of the Union in a previous episode. And sure enough, looting this map places the Temple of the Union as a map marker on our Pip-Boy map. I covered the Temple of the Union and the quest that brings us to the Lincoln Memorial in a previous episode that you can watch here. But the northern end of either track is blocked in with rubble, so we've got to move south. Heading south, we can explore underneath the mezzanine level, but there's nothing here but rubbish. We can loot the bodies of the various ghouls that the Protectron had killed until we arrive on the southern end of this level. 
Ruined train cars block us from reaching the tunnel on the other side, so we'll go south down this one. A short ways in, we see that this tunnel splits. The path goes off to the west and then continues south. Peering to the west, we see a ghoul that we can pick off. And it looks like this path has a dead end, so moving this way first, we can loot the bodies of the ghouls, and then at the very end, sure enough, we see a big pile of rubble and more radioactive barrels. Our Rad X has expired, so taking more Rad X, we can creep forward to loot the bodies of the ghouls and the body of a wastelander lying on these tracks with the body of a raider draped over one of these radioactive barrels. There's nothing else in this rubble, so retracing our steps back to the tracks, we can continue to follow them south. Here, the wall separating the two tracks opens up, and peering across the way to the other track, we see a vicious dog. Oh, it's a couple of them. Wait, one more. With the vicious dogs dead, we can continue south. We find a construction light next to a sandbag barricade at the base of which are three ammunition boxes with a small amount of scrap. This one is locked with an easy lock. We can pick it for the ammunition. Beyond the sandbag barricade is a staircase covered in graffiti. The Brotherhood symbol points up the stairs and lying on the tracks is the corpse of a raider, a raider we did not kill. Looking at the signs on the wall, we see northbound back to Metro Central and southbound to Museum Station. The Brotherhood graffiti reads Mall Outpost. Heading up the stairs, we round a corner until we open a door to Museum Station. We arrive in a small room. We have not been here before. On a table is a box of shotgun shells. Beneath the table is an ammunition box we can loot, and against the southern wall are a variety of metal boxes, one of which has a metro ticket inside. The lockers against the wall are mostly empty. Ooh, and we alert a ghoul nearby. Turning off our light and moving forward, we can move around this wall to see a ghoul walking upstairs. But the ghoul stops at the top of the stairs. Bullshit. Come out and fight! We hear the voices of raiders above us. We are at the bottom of a staircase leading to a trap door. The graffiti said that this leads to the mall outpost. We haven't been to the mall yet. I need to explore it, but we can't explore it in today's episode. So we'll turn around for now, but we will be back. Back to Metro Central, we arrive again on the tracks. This time, we can move across a big pile of rubble to the other tracks, follow them south, whereupon we see the bodies of all of those dogs we killed. There is a door just off to the east. Moving south, we see the track blocked in with more concrete. Can't go that way, so we can head to the east to pick an average locked door. Donning our utility jumpsuit, we can pick the lock to find a tidy stash. All right, what have we got here? Turning left, we find railway spikes and mentats at the bottom of this shelf covered in scrap. The next one over has some buff out, jet, and a copy of Pugilism Illustrated. Nice. The top shelf has two more stacks of railway spikes and more mentats. Turning east, we see two first aid boxes that we can loot, one of which has right away inside. All right. And that's it for the stash room. And that appears to be it for Metro Central. Moving north, we arrive back at Metro Central at the bottom of the escalator. We can't go down any further, and we can't go any further north or south down the tracks. Our choices now are to go towards Museum Station and from there to explore the mall, or to go back to Pennsylvania Avenue and take one of the two pathways we found there to examine Seward Square. Well, heading back up to this mezzanine, we can take a look at the map to make our decision. 
Here we are at Metro Central. We entered here from the large station in the middle of Pennsylvania Avenue. From here, we discovered a pathway that led to DuPont Station, a path that led to Vernon Square via Freedom Street Station, a path that led to Foggy Bottom, and a path that led to the mall via the Museum Station. If we go towards the museum, it looks like from there, the only path we can take is towards L'Enfant Plaza and then back out to the Capitol Wasteland. If instead we go towards Seward Square, we find only one path out that also leads out to the Capitol Wasteland. I think our best bet to continue with the least amount of backtracking is to go south towards Seward Square, then head back to Penn Ave and take Penn Ave South to explore the mall. Then, after we finish the mall, head towards L'Enfant Plaza and then back out through the irradiated metro to the Capitol Wasteland. So, Seward Square it is. Scanning for ballot ticket. Verified. Thank you for riding with Metro. Oh, God. He took another Metro ticket from us. I didn't realize that the same ticket taker Protectron would continue to take tickets from us. Uh, well, those are a limited resource. I guess we better get out of here before he takes all of our tickets. So retracing our steps, we can head east up the escalator. Move across the platform, past the Corvega that crashed through the ceiling, north up the escalator to this first mezzanine, then north through the turnstiles, past the large circular waiting room by the bathrooms, past the ticket booth, and up the ramp through the gate back to Pennsylvania Avenue. From here, we've got two paths to Seward Square. We could go through the sewer that we discovered in our last episode, or we can move up the escalators, through Metro Central back to the road, and then turn left, head past the Pulowski Preservation Shelter, towards the chain gate to the Seward Square Metro. And as we explored this in my video on Pennsylvania Avenue, we know exactly where to go. Through the turnstiles, right into the bathroom, through the hole in the wall into this utility room, down a utility tunnel, through an employee break room, down a long winding hallway, passing through a ruined office space in Seward Square Station until we arrive at the turnstiles, whereupon we head southeast up the ramp to arrive at Seward Square. But before moving on, we can bid farewell to Metro Central with a brief montage.
with that, I'm all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off and explore Seward Square in my next episode. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss that episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, and YouTube members get little badges that appear next to their names in the comment sections of my videos and access to ox emojis that they can use in the video comments and in the live chats of my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.